Hello, today we're starting 10.1 notes, um, arc and central angles in circles. So our objectives are students will be able to find missing central angles in a circle and students will be able to find the measure of arcs in a circle. So first, central angle of a circle. A central angle of a circle has a vertex on the center of the circle and its rays are the radius of the circle. So if we take a look here, um, we see that we have these, um, this angle in the center. The vertex here is always going to be on the center for a central angle and then it's going to go all the way to the edge which is a radius of the circle. All right, an arc of a circle is a portion of the circumference of the circle. In other words, it is part of the curved outer portion of the circle. So we have a single part of the whole thing. So we have the entire circle, right? I can go from point A to point A. That'd be the whole thing. An arc is just part of that whole thing. So we can see here, um, it's slightly darker than the, or slightly different color than the rest of it. So from A to B, the arc is there. All right. I want you guys to go ahead and check out the exploration. I want you to pause the video, uh, try it out, and then we will take a look at it together. Um, it does say move points B and C around and watch how the measures of the central angle and the enclosed arc change. Then make a conjecture about their relationship. All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. So if I were to move C, Let's see, let's move it there. So our uh, ins inscribed angle, sorry, our central angle is 43 degrees and our arc is also 43 degrees. Let's move it a little bit this way. Now I have 135 and 135. B, I can make it bigger or smaller. Let's make it smaller. I think that's about the same. Let's make it real small. All right, 176, 176. So the conclusion that we can come up with is that they are the same. They are congruent. They are equal. All right, so they are congruent to each other. So let's go ahead and fill out their definition. So measure of an arc is congruent to the measure of the central angle. So they are going to be the same length from the inside to the outside. Measure of a semicircle. A semicircle is an arc formed by the diameter. If I can spell it, of a circle, and its measure is 180 degrees. So if we think about, first of all, semicircle. Semicircle is half of a circle. But I did talk about earlier how it is two radius, right, because it's one radius and the other. Well, we still have that here. It just, when we put the two radiuses right next to one another to create that straight line, it makes the diameter. So whenever you see a diameter, whenever you see that straight line, know that that whole thing is 180 degrees. And then any circle has a total measure of 360 degrees. So going all the way around is 360. If we had a bunch of little parts all the way around, we would be able to add them together and know that it equals 360, similar to our quadrilaterals that we were just working with. Okay, let's go ahead and try a couple examples. So find the measure of the variables for each diagram. So whenever we have an angle that's right on the center of my circle, that means this angle and my arc are going to be the same degree. So therefore, I can say x equals 74 degrees. All right, let's take a look at number two. We have a few variables here. Let's go ahead and start with 36, since that's the number we see. It goes along with the arc measure, so that means x equals 36. Okay, let's take a look at, let's do y next. So y, there is no number here, so I can't just take that and say that equals y, but I do see that I have this straight line. So therefore, this whole half, right, the semicircle, is 180 degrees. And that's the whole thing. That's not just 
the large portion there, but the whole thing is 180 degrees. So if I'm trying to get rid of this little piece, then I can say 180 minus 36 will give me that larger portion there. So let's go ahead and do that. 180 minus 36 will give me 144. So that is going to be Y. All right, so this portion here is 144 degrees. Okay, let's take a look at Z. Very similarly with the other side, there's no number here. Yes, there's an A, but that's just to say it's circle A. The center is at A. But this whole thing right here is 180 degrees. And it's not being chopped up by anything, so that just means Z also equals 180 degrees. All right, so there's a couple things we're looking for. We're looking for what is the measure in the center that goes out to the arc. And then if, we're, if we have any straight lines, how can we use that to decide, okay, I'm going to use this 180 to either do subtraction or to say that it's the whole measure like we did with Z. All right, I want you guys to th try three and four. Go ahead and pause the video, and then um, when you unpause it, the answer should pop up here shortly. All right, here is three and four. Three, we were able to see 113. We had to do some subtraction. And then for number four, to find Z, we had to do some subtraction with that 180 as well. All right, let's take a look at five. So five, we have a couple things going on. We have a couple straight lines that we can look at. So it is important to be able to see where those straight lines are. Because wherever those straight lines are, we have 180 degrees. And so since we have two straight lines, I can label one, two, three, four different 180 degrees. I'm not going to write them all down uh, right now, but as we need them, we will do so. All right, so the first thing I notice is 41 degrees. We have A right there, so A equals 41 degrees. Next, I also see I have this box. Remember that equals 90 degrees. So therefore, take that out for B. B equals 90 degrees. Okay, now to find some other variables. Let's go ahead and take a look at F. So the yellow line, I have a straight line. So that means that whole thing is 180 degrees. To find that small part, I'm going to take 180 and subtract 41. When I do that, I'm going to get 139 degrees. So therefore, F equals 139 degrees. Okay. All right, let's take a look at C and D next, right? And so we know that they're going to be equal. We just have to figure out what one of the values are to find the other. I'm going to use this blue line now to say, okay, I have another thing of 180 degrees here, right? So I use line to find F, and I'm going to use that blue line to find C and D. Since I know what F is, I can take 180 and subtract 139, All right? Because I just found that, and so if I take that piece out, I'm going to have that smaller piece there. And what I'm going to get is 41 degrees. So therefore, C equals 41 as well as D. So remember, they do equal each other. Let's put D equals C, which is true, but we need some value there. Um, something we also have is vertical angles. Remember, vertical angles are congruent. All right, and then our last one. Let's see, we can do it a couple different ways. We can either use the yellow line or the blue line, since we know all the other pieces, or we can even add them all up together, subtract from 360 in order to find E. But I'm going to go ahead and use the 180. Let's go ahead and use the yellow line again. So I'm using this yellow line to decide. And I know, so we're subtracting from 180. We have a 90 degrees. We have C, which is 41 degrees. And then that leaves us with E for what we're trying to find. All right, so when I subtract all of those together, I'm going to end up with 49 degrees. So therefore, that means E degrees equals 49. 
voila, there's the whole problem. So we just have to really pay attention to those straight lines. And as you can see, there's a lot of different lines that I drew. So sometimes when you're going through it, you want to make sure you draw those nice, um, nice arcs so you can see them, but also draw them lightly. So if you need to erase or if you accidentally messed up, you don't have a whole bunch of um, erase marks on your paper. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and try number six. It's another one with a bunch of different pieces that we have to find and figure out. All right, and here is six number finished up. We have all the different parts. I have the subtraction. A lot of my subtraction is coming from 180 degrees because I'm taking those straight lines and using that to help me out. All right, let's go ahead and take a look the next page. So the arc addition postulate states that arcs that are adjacent can be added to find the measure of the larger arc. So if we have two arcs that are right next to one another, I can add them together and it will give me the whole thing. So we can see here PQ is here and then QR is here and then I add all of that together to get the entire thing. All right, we have worked with the addition postulate before and we've worked with it with line segments and we've also worked with um, angles. So it's just the same concept where we add them together and it will give me the whole thing or vice versa. If we are given the whole thing and um, part, so maybe we're given PQR and PQ, I would be able to subtract those to get QR. Very similarly like we do with the 180 degrees, except for they'll be a little bit more precise. All right, number seven, note, if an arc named with three letters, it is called a major arc, and the measure is calculated the long way around the circle. Follow the order of the letters. The, find the measure of each arc angle. Assume that KN is the diameter. So we have KN is the diameter here. All right, um, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of these. So let's start with A, so QN. We have this here, and as we go along, since we are trying to find all these pieces, we're gonna label everything as we go. So QN, that's with the 44 degrees, so I can say, all right, that is 44 degrees. Next, I have B, which is SQ. SQ is right here, right? So therefore, I know that this part is 86, so I can take 180, minus 86 and minus 44, right? Because I'm this whole thing is 180 and so I have to subtract out the other two to get the middle. So when I subtract all those together, I'm gonna end up with 50 degrees. So I can say here that this is 50 degrees. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at measure of angle SRN. So let's go ahead and see. So S to R to N. So this is where our angle addition postulate comes in. SRN has 50 and 44 inside. So therefore I need to add those together to get the whole thing, which is 94 degrees. Okay, let's take a look at measure or D. So Q or Q and K, there we go. So Q and K. I'm just gonna go and follow the letters Q and K. Wonderful, so we're gonna have to add together all of these pieces that are pink. So I have the ability to highlight it all, so I'm gonna go ahead and do so. This whole part in here is all what we're trying to find. All right, so normally I would say just take all the pieces, add them together, but as you can see, we don't know these two bottom pieces yet. But I do know that this whole part is 180 degrees. So I might not know them individually, but I do know that whole thing is 180 degrees. So I can take that 180 and add it together with the 44. And that will give me that entire part. So once again, using those straight lines, they are very, very helpful in seeing these um, circles. When you see that diameter, just think 180 degrees. And it'll make some of your problems just a little bit easier. So when I add those together, I'm going to get 224 degrees. 
All right, E, we want T, R, N. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this real quick, just to give us a little bit of space. So T, R, N, we have T to R to N. So we have that angle there. All right, here I noticed a couple things. One, we do have another straight line here. So therefore we have the another diameter shown. And then also I see vertical angles. Oops, come back. All right, so I see vertical angles right here and here. And those two are congruent to one another. But let's go ahead and use the 180 because that is a for sure way every time. So 180 minus 44, that's going to give me 136 degrees. So we have 136 degrees here. All right, and then the last one, we want Q and S. So that's around the side, Q to N, and then all the way to S over there. So that is the majority of my circle, right? It's the whole thing except for this one slice. So we can do a couple things. We can add all the pieces together to get me what I want. Or remember the entire thing is 360. I know that I'm taking out just the 50 degrees so I can subtract and figure out what that is. So the whole thing is 360. The only part I'm not looking at is the 50 degree arc. So therefore when I subtract those together, I'm gonna get 310 degrees. All right, so we just take what we know and we slowly add in the information as we get it so we always see it on our diagram. All right, and I want you guys to go ahead and try number eight. Go ahead and pause the video, give it a shot. All right, here we have number eight. I was able for the first two to just slowly add all my numbers together. Then with the last one, I wanted GF. And so once again, since I knew that that was the only piece I'm missing from the whole thing, which is 360. I took out the 230 I knew to be left with my final answer. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at nine and 10. So sometimes we aren't gonna be just given, hey, find X, but we'll be, or we still have to find X, but it won't be very straightforward, like X equals the arc. We might have stuff like an equation here. But we are going to do the exact same thing. So 5x minus 13 equals 106. We're going to add 13 to both sides. I get 5x equals 119. And then divide by 5. I know 5 doesn't go into 119, so I'm just going to leave it as a fraction. If you put it in as a decimal, that is okay too. All right, then with number 10 here, we have this straight line, so we have 180 degrees there. So we'll do the same thing where we take these two and add them together to get 180. So we know that if they add them together, they'll equal 180 degrees. So that gives me 5x plus 80 equals 180. When I subtract 80 from both sides, I get 5x equals 100. Then when I divide by 5, x equals 20. All right, and that is the end of 2.1. Please be sure if you have any further questions, um, ask your teacher, uh, rewatch the video as needed, and I hope you have a wonderful day.